Hi, this is Eric Smith. I just thought I would uh, do a video speaking on a particular subject that's been in the news the last week or two. But before I start the subject, I want to read uh, these two verses from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20, uh, verses 20 and 21. It says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Now in these verses, when the prophet Isaiah is speaking for God and he pronounces woe on someone or um, on something, that is a sign of judgment. That means God is going to judge that person or persons for the things that they, they, that they are doing. And in these two particular verses, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light, light for darkness. Also, it says, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. These two verses describe a lot of things that have been going on lately in our country. Um, there's been so many things going on uh, because of the George Floyd situation, uh, with the rioting, with the looting, with the protesting. And now that has led to something that it shouldn't shock me because this is the unsaved world. And as a Christian, um, I'm never surprised when someone in the unsaved world um, says something or does something that would seem insane. But it's still, <laughs> I was kind of blown away a few weeks ago when... I heard so many people in so many cities talking about defunding the police or um, reforming the police or eliminating or abolishing the police altogether. These things, they are completely silly. They're crazy and it's insanity. And as Christians, we should not sign off on these things. We should not think that these things are acceptable in the sight of the Lord and I want to give three reasons why this is true but before I get into the three reasons I want to back up and just kind of talk about what sparked all this oh, excuse me uh, as you know if you're subscribed to my channel or if you've seen some of the videos I did I did a five part video series on George Floyd and racism so this video is kind of an offshoot of that just talking about a, a particular subject due to that. So I want to back up and let's start from the beginning as how how we got here. Um, we know that the situation with George Floyd was shown all over the news. Um, he was an African American man. Um, an officer put his knee on his neck. Um, it was on his neck for a long time and George Floyd died. Uh, it was brutal to watch and those police officers were suspended and then they were charged with, I think it was either uh, second degree or third degree murder. Um, I can't remember now. So the powers that be saw that and thought, yeah, that was excessive and we need to charge these officers with murder. Well, as you know, the incident sparked all kinds of protests, protests all over the United States of America and a little bit outside the United States. The protests, um, some of them were peaceful, but then it escalated and it became rioting and looting and all kinds of things. And it just got out of hand. It got out of hand so much that we didn't even know what to think about it. Unfortunately, some Christians were, I'm not saying they were justifying it, but they were saying, well, this is the reason why they're doing all those things. And as I point out in my five point, uh, I mean, my, my, my five video series uh, about George Floyd and racism, there's no justification for sinning. Um, we can't stand before God and say, wow, I did this wicked sin because of this particular reason and I'm justified. Well, having said that, there was rioting, looting, and all kinds of things were happening. And then there was a second incident where a man was in a Wendy's parking lot. He was drunk. The police officers calmly... Uh, went to the man. Uh, they did a sobriety test. The man failed the test and as police officers are supposed to do, they were going to arrest the man for being um, intoxicated. Well, the man resisted arrest 
He started fighting with the police officers. He punched one police officer and then took the other police officer's taser and then started running. The police officer tried to stop him. The man turned around with the taser, shot at the police officer. A taser um, was considered a deadly weapon in that state, so the police officer fired. He killed the man. Everybody got in an uproar about that, and they just thought that this was an unjust thing. It was like a police officers killing, and again, he was an African-American man, just killing another African-American man and um, shooting him and killing him. And then this sparked a whole bunch of other protests, rioting, and then people started saying, you know what, the police are doing brutal things and we need to defund them. And so there was a lot of, we want to abolish the police, we want to defund them, um, they don't need to be doing this. And so a lot of police departments were, um, they were cutting back their services, um, so to speak. Um, not really cutting back their services. Um, they were taking votes and they were saying, hey, we're going to uh, cut funding for the police departments. Then a bunch of other crazy things started happening. Uh, then some rioters and some some people that were protesters took over um, six blocks in Seattle and called it a cop-free zone, and they stayed there for weeks. I, I, as of the filming of this video, right now, they're trying to disperse. But the police officers ran. They were gone. It was just, it was just craziness. And then other big cities started having the same thing, where people were just doing all kinds of crazy things. They didn't want uh, the police officers there. So the bottom line, people, because of these two incidents and because they're fed up, so to speak, they think that the police need to be reformed, which is not, nothing wrong with that if the police officers are doing something that's wrong, if they're not following procedure. But they wanted them reformed. They wanted them defunded. So they don't want any taxpayer money going to the police anymore which means that police officers wouldn't be trained, they, the police force would be smaller, and in some instances they just want to abolish the police completely because they think the police are ineffective, they're racist, they're brutal. So that's the gist of this movement to defund the police. Now as Christians, we need to be careful about signing off on this or even justifying this. And now I'm going to give you three reasons why. First reason, um, I'm going to go to Romans, Romans chapter 13, and I want to read verses 1 through 6. This is the Word of God. It says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to do thee for good. To, to thee for good, excuse me. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For, for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. These set of verses tells the Christian, you should be subject to the governing powers. And what is the reason given? Because they are ordained by God and they're actually ministers of God. Now someone would read this and hear this in the church and go, well, wait a minute. You're trying to tell me that the unsaved government is ordained by God? And the answer is yes. It doesn't make a difference if you're voting Republican, Democrat, Independent, whoever is in office, God put them there. And you know why he puts the governing powers in there? It says to do what? To protect us. Because he's a minister of God to thee for good. He is supposed to protect the land from evildoers. That's why there's governing powers. So the police department, the sheriff department, the state police, the FBI, the CIA, the armed forces, all of these things are under the umbrella of the governing powers 
that are supposed to protect us. If you defund these things, what you're basically saying is, we don't want to be protected by the governing powers. Now, you may not like the governing powers, and you may think a particular thing about them, but here's something that's amazing. When the Apostle Paul was writing this, uh, these verses in chapter 13 of Romans, he was under Nero of the Roman government. Nero, if you look at your secular history, was a very unstable and literally crazy person. He had an affair with his mother. He killed his brother. He literally burned Christians. He put them, he hung them upside down, lit them on fire, and used them as street lamps. He literally burned down Rome and blamed it on the Christians. This man was literally crazy. And yet, the Apostle Paul, writing to the Christians in Rome, said, the governing powers are put in by God to protect us. That's why we have man-made laws here. They're, own, they're derivative of God's law. They're not perfect, and the governing powers aren't perfect. They're unsaved people, but they're still put in by God. And when you say that we don't need police, what we're saying is there's no law and there's no one to protect us. And you can say, well, police department's doing this, and they're bad here and there. I understand that. If you have a bad police officer or a law enforcement agent that's uh, breaking the law, then there needs to be due process. But no matter how many people in that job is doing something bad, you can't take a broad brush and say it's every single police officer, it's every single law enforcement agent, so we need to cut back on police officers. Well, that's insanity because when there's crime, who is going to prevent the crime? Who's going to get the evildoers? That's why God puts governments in power. And I want to read a verse from Proverbs. Proverbs 21.1. It says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. The king, the ruler, the governing powers are in the hands of God. Providentially, they're in the hands of God. Sovereignly, they're in the hands of God. Even the wicked government, they are still going to be used by God to protect people from evildoers. And the police department, law enforcement agents, they're all under the governing powers. If you defund them, you're basically saying, we don't want them to protect us. And we're saying that God did not put them there. Now, if you want to reform them, you have to have specific reforms and have proof that they're actually breaking laws or they're breaking procedures. So reform is not bad, but if you're going to say we need to get rid of police officers, you're going to have a lot of problems on your hands. And this brings up the second reason why you shouldn't defund the police. I'm going to go to the book of Judges. This is Judges 17, verse 6. I just want to read this. It says, In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. During the time in the book of Judges, there was no king. There was no governing power in Israel. Guess what happened? The people of Israel, who were supposed to be God's people, did what was right in their own eyes. There was no law for them to obey. They obeyed whatever they wanted to do. So since there was no law, there was anarchy. That's lawlessness, where you just make it up as you go along. It's subjective. When you have no governing power, that's exactly what's going to happen. And these were God's people. So now, in a secular land we're living in now, we're saying... We don't need police officers to protect us. We just want anarchy. We want people to go crazy out here and just do what they want to do. And guess what? Look at, look at the films of the things that were going on in Seattle. 
you had weeks of people that had six blocks to themselves. There was no police, and even the governing powers gave into it. The mayor there didn't do anything, the police chief. You're talking about the governing powers that weren't doing what they were supposed to do. And in those six blocks, look what happened. There was violence, there was uh, defacement of property, people were getting hurt. It was just crazy out there. There was one incident where someone got shot and the police couldn't even go in and get the man out because people wanted lawlessness. If you have no police, you're going to have lawlessness. In fact, the only people that want to defund the police or abolish the police are criminals. If they have no police there, then they can just go ahead and break the law. They can kill who they want to. They can shoot who they want to. They can rob who they want to. It, it, it'll be anarchy. It's crazy. And just like in the book of Judges, when there was no king, there was no governing power, anarchy ruled. And you know what? If God wasn't having it for Old Testament Israel, his people, and God is sovereign over all, which he is, he's not going to have it here either. Now, he'll work out everything for good, even this craziness here. But you better believe when you disobey God's laws and then the laws of the land, there is going to be punishment and consequences for it. God does not want people, whether you're saved or unsaved, thinking that you can abide by your own way of thinking, your own laws. Let's bring up the third thing that this, you know, defunding the police will, will bring. If there's anarchy, it eventually is going to lead to what? Violence. And eventually murder. I want to read a verse um, from Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 6. This is God talking to Noah. Uh, this is God letting Noah know why he was going to bring judgment in the form of a global flood. Genesis 6 verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then if you go to verses 11 through 13, he says the earth was corrupt and it was filled with violence. And then that's why God judged the earth. That's what happens when you have no law. Because the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. We're sinful. That's what Jeremiah 17, 9 says. Romans 3, 10 through 18 talks about the sinful man talks about how they act and think under sin. When you don't even have governing laws, and when you have no police department to stop that, sinful man is going to do exactly what he wants to do, and that's sin. And part of that sin is murder. Let me read that in Romans 3. Bible here. There we go. Romans 3, 13 through 18. Listen carefully to the description of sinful man. And if there's no restraint, like police, this is what they're going to do. Starting at verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You know what's happening? They're wicked. They're murdering. They're doing everything they can uh, to just basically sin the way they want to sin. Tell an unsaved person who has a sinful heart that there's no police department there to stop them. And you know what they're going to do? Whatever is right in their own eyes. And then you know what's going to happen? They're going to be murderous. And people are going to get shot. People are going to get murdered. People are going to get attacked. If you think there's no governing power that's going to stop it, 
then why would you not do it? Think about it. There are people running around right now that are saying defund the police and abolish the police and we want a police free zone. Well, you know what? A criminal can't wait to hear that. And an unsafe person that has murderous intent can't wait to do that. An unsafe person that can't wait to steal can't wait to hear that there's going to be no police. I, I just saw a video where in Oakland they're going to stop the police from being in the schools. Well, okay. What's going to happen when there's violence and then there's school shootings and all these things happen? Who's going to protect you? And they want to bring in counselors and things like that? What are you going to do? Counsel somebody that's trying to shoot you or trying to beat up somebody? That's not going to stop anything. You have people that are lawbreakers and they're breaking the law. That's why police is there, to protect us from one another. And God puts them there to protect us from evildoers. So those are the three reasons why you can't defund the police. And I want to end with this one more verse from Proverbs. This is Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto man, unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. When we want to do what's right in our own eyes, it leads to death. That's why the wages of sin is death. That's why Romans 6, 23 says that. That's why, as Christians, we don't need to sign off on this or even justify unsaved people wanting to do this. We need to show them that the governing powers are put in to protect them and that God puts them in control. Listen, years ago when, when President Obama was president for eight years, there were some Christians that were upset about that because they didn't believe in his policies. I get that completely. But you know what? He was still the governing powers and... If we could obey where we could, like if he tells you not to preach the gospel and not to be a Christian, that's a different subject. But we can obey him where we could obey him. And if we disagree with him, we can be gracious to, to bring our disagreements to him. In the same respect now, President Trump is our, our president. There's some Christians that don't like him. Again, we're supposed to obey the governing powers. He's put in there to protect us. And if you have any grievances, if he's done something, then you need to be respectful about that. You need to be respectful no matter what party that president's in. And in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, we're told to pray for our leaders. We're to pray for their salvation and we're to pray for them to do the things that they're supposed to do. We're supposed to pray for the police. They're not perfect. Many of them are unsaved and they need the Lord Jesus Christ. But God puts them there to protect people. And Christian, when an unsaved person starts talking about defund the police and this is the reason why, you need to show them through the scriptures why that's not only unbiblical but very, very dangerous. So I just wanted to do this really quick video uh, to discuss that. As Christians, we don't want to ever put a stamp of approval on something that is wicked. Don't call evil good and good evil. That's happening right now in the world. People are doing what they think they want to do. It's prudent in their own eyes. It's ridiculous. It doesn't line up with the Word of God, and it's illogical, and it doesn't even make common sense. If you have a problem with the police... You can take it to the powers that be with specific evidence and say, we need to take care of this particular problem. But I'm going to be honest, police officers aren't driving around every single moment of the day licking their chops going, hey, who can we attack? Oh, let's go into the African American community and just pull, pull them over every single day. There's statistics that show that this isn't even true. And I'm not even going to get into all that. As Christians, we don't need to sign off on these things and think that the police are our enemy. If somebody breaks into my house and I don't have a firearm of my own to protect myself, then i got to call the police. If you abolish them or defund them or give reforms that may, you know, handcuff them from protecting you, then guess what? 
you're going to get hurt because they're not going to be there for you to call because you're defunding them and you're saying you don't need them. According to the word of God, yes, you do. So, if anybody wants to leave comments about uh, what I just talked about, I'm sure I missed some things and I'm sure, as always, I'm not the most eloquent uh, speaker when I'm doing these videos. But we need to bring everything to the word of God and even defunding the police, it's not biblical. And we need to have a biblical response as Christians. Now, again, if you disagree, please put the comments there. Please tell me why you disagree biblically. Don't give me your opinion. Uh, don't give me your emotions. I want to know through the scriptures why you don't agree. And I'm speaking to Christians here. If you're unsaved, listen, the only thing I can do is tell you what the Bible says and then lead you to the cross of Christ because you need to be saved. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And God bless.